Well, back to Victoria, where Victorians are writing to me and feeling helpless. Remember, I showed you the pictures of police violence in Victoria and I told you the story about Pastor Paul Furlong, who refused to close his church. His house was raided. He runs a charity organisation and he was refused bail. I spoke almost two weeks ago to Monica Smith, the Managing Director of Reignite Democracy Australia, reignitedemocracyaustralia.com.au. Let's go back to Monica. Monica, thank you for your time. Thank you for what you're doing. Pastor Paul was in the remand centre, which is as bad as jail, a pastor with actual criminals and murderers. That's exactly right. He was, and even his Bible was taken away from him for one whole week. So you can imagine how difficult that would have been for so him. So on Tuesday he was granted bail, but he's not allowed to use social media. The prosecutor tried to add a bail condition that he couldn't communicate with you, but here was a pious man being treated like a criminal. This is Victoria. Yes, well, actually, I want to quote something that uh, the representative for Victoria Police said. Senior Sergeant Luke Holmes said, and I quote, Mr Furlong holds his beliefs very strongly, which is a concern to us. So Mr. apparently courage of conviction is, is now a crime in Victoria. So Mr and Furlong holds his beliefs are pastor very strongly, which is a concern for us. So strong beliefs are now a police matter. Monica, I know that you and I have been in touch. We'll speak to Pastor Paul. Please tell him that. But they took his Bible away for a whole week. He had to beg to get one back and sign papers. Have a look at this about Pastor Paul being arrested simply for opening his business because he's a businessman as well as a pastor who refused to close his church. Have a look at this. No, you can't, you can't do this. He's not even doing anything wrong. You're arresting a pastor of a church that helps people. Disgusting, isn't it? And this is the kind of work this fellow is doing in the community, but the Andrews government locks him up with criminals. Listen to this, the pastor speak. This business was reset up five years ago for one purpose, um, and that is to pour all the profits uh, into saving lives all around the world. Right now in India, we are about to uh, engage uh, some inside contacts with the police. We are raiding some homes that are holding young women as sex slaves. And we are freeing 20 of them in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. This bloke's thrown into jail with criminals. Monica, the mystery is how Victorian people put up with this stuff. Oh, that's a really good question. Actually, it motivates us more and more, to be honest. Unfortunately, the, the more these stories come out, the more people want to actually fight to take their freedoms back, and that's what we are doing at Reignite Democracy Australia. The thousands of volunteers, you know? I know, but, I mean, Andrews is coming back on June 28. Uh, he is in a mentally abusive relationship with the whole state. Is there anxiety about the return? I mean, is it credible that the leader falls down some steps and abandons his people for three months? Yeah, it's quite shocking that he did that. But I'm going to take a little bit of a different take on Daniel Andrews coming back to work is I'm actually glad he's coming back because one thing he's really good at, Alan, is doing a bad job. And the quicker he comes back, the quicker Victorians are going to get into action and make sure that this never happens again. And it won't because we've had enough. Well, look at this headline in the Melbourne Age three days ago. A headline in the Melbourne Age that the Andrews government was secretly negotiating permanent pandemic laws. So, Monica, the reports are the government is secretly negotiating with three crossbenchers who hardly got any votes at the last election to introduce specific pandemic laws. It's shocking. It's been happening for the last year and a half. Those three crossbenchers are basically deciding everything. And it makes the other members of parliament, who are very good, by the way, feel must feel quite helpless to, to not have a vote. Uh, they're not even talk the, the Andrews government isn't even talking to these other members of parliament. Right. Just the three. Just the three that make That's the right. votes. And I mean, in the trade off, I understand the crossbenchers want police, listen to this, to record the racial appearance of people they stop or fine for breaching health directions. Monica, keep us posted on all of this. You're doing a wonderful job down there. And thank you for your time tonight. Tell the pastor we will talk to him. Very grateful I for will. your time. Thank you, Alan. Thank there you so are. much that for having Mon me on. Monica Smith, but, I mean, extraordinary stuff, isn't it, with the government in Victoria and the Victorian people. I mean, you've got to say this has to end. This kind of stuff can't go on. Who is speaking out apart from Monica? Where is the opposition? Where are the media in all of this? Absolutely nowhere. They all seem to be prepared to endorse anything this bloke does and everything he does or his government does lacks any kind of accountability. The website for Monica Smith is reignitedemocracyaustralia.com.au.